we went off, had a coffee, bit of cake, not really. Okay, so let's get back into that immune system. And hold, hold, hold. So not a lot of uh, energy going on in there. So there's basically two points either side uh, that I check with each arm because each side of the brain needs to communicate with each acupuncture point, which is why I do one with both arms and then the other one with both arms. And the little spot up here, it's called an energy mismatch point. And what that is, that is your body not recognizing something in your system that might be good, it might be bad, it might be indifferent, but one way or the other, your body doesn't know what it is perfectly. So an example of that is the bugs like E. coli, you know, they are a normal part of our body system. It's when they become pathogenic that they're a problem. So the good forms of E. coli don't do us any harm. The bad forms cause us problems all the time. Same with, let's say, coronaviruses. Most of us have come in contact with a cold or a flu or a bug over the years, about 15 to 30% of colds and flus are coronaviruses. So, you know, many of us have some level of immunity for it already. So this happens all the time because there are thousands and thousands of varieties of bugs in our gut. So just throwing that out there right from the start. So now what I'm gonna do is, um, is work through a little process picking up the immune system. And this is this little process is fairly repetitive. So I'll just be going through one by one, telling you what's showing up. Uh, if it gives me any more um, information, like if sometimes I'll actually go and check if there's sp specific organs, if it's something that feels like it's gonna be like a cyber thing or a candida thing or something like that. Anyway, I'll talk you through it. So firstly with the uh, immune system. These are things that you can do yourself if you so choose. I don't know whether I mentioned the Moro reflex yesterday. I can't remember. But in the playlist self-help processes, I think, uh, there's, a, there's a video in there somewhere called uh, Moro reflex or primitive reflexes. Anyway, so Moro, M-O-R-O. There's an exercise that you can do that takes a minute to do morning and night. And with some of the stress that you've been through in your life, sometimes that can activate a moro reflex which keeps your survival stuff heightened all the time. So with your deep survival and hidden deep survival that we cleared before, those survival patterns set up from two years old. Whereas the moro reflex, if it's there, it sets up from in utero to about two years old. So survival patterns don't go back to in the womb because that's not how the brain works. The brain is running on primitive reflexes until we're a couple of years old. And then after that, it starts setting up these, you know, big messy patterns that then control our lives. So anyway, the Moro reflex, it takes a minute to do morning and night and it would, wouldn't be a bad idea for you to do it, especially since you'll be balanced after this. So in the clear hold. Hold, hold. Because obviously we need a nice strong immune system to check things to. Okay. So I'm just gonna go through my process, start at the beginning. Okay. And I get down to the first thing. <laughs> so in relation to biofilm and mucoid plaque. Hold. Okay. So, now I did have a question today about, because people tend to think that endoscopies and colonoscopies clear all biofilm from the system. Now, I don't know what the difference is, but the body, when it's irritated, can release mucus to protect itself. So you can have areas through the stomach, small intestine, large intestine, that are irritated, and if they're irritated, then your body can be releasing mucus to protect itself. Now, that is a normal process. Same way when you get a cold, you get a bit of mucus, you blow your nose, off goes the mucus with the bacteria or, or virus, whatever it is that's causing the cold. So mucus is a normal thing, as long as it doesn't get out of hand. 
Now, when biofilm and mucoid plaque show up within this immune system protocol, it's not because it's there, it's because it's pathogenic or holding old infections or toxins. So, um, yeah, so basically it means that your body can now start to recognise it. So that's what this does, gets it to start to recognise it. And then the supplements like the Bactrex we were chatting about yesterday or Parax, those sort of things can start breaking down the biofilm, but that can release old infections that are hiding underneath it. So just say this is your stomach lining and this is the mucus and in between here might be fungus or candida or something because they love a warm, sweet, acidic environment. <sighs> so let's have a look. So in relation to biofilm and mucoid plaque. Hold. Hold, 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 beautiful. Yeah, but something like 80% of infections that they can't find in the combination of blood, urine, sputum and poop tests are found in the biofilm in the body. So, and it can take somewhere up to a thousand times the usual doses of antibiotics to break down the biofilm. Herbs are much more effective at it, probably because antibiotics were never designed to break down biofilm. But yeah, so biofilm can hold anything, bacteria, fungus, parasites, candida, protozoa, all sorts of stuff. Okay, so now the next thing showing up, which is microbiome degradation. So like we were chatting yesterday about kidney stones, um, there are specific bugs in the gut. So a certain you know, uh, bug within your microbiome or your microbiome are uh, designed to sop up the toxins that create kidney stones. So when we're creating kidney stones, something has been damaged in there, for example. And there was actually a study that was, do you remember that, um, that TV show that was about uh, eating McDonald's and then people getting all the blood tests and the doctors were like, oh, I didn't know McDonald's was going to cause, you know, liver disease and stuff like that. Well, there was a similar study done with uh, good diet versus bad diet. And this scientist, um, I think it was his like 16 year old son who said, yeah, I'll eat crap for three weeks. So they measured the amount of microbiome he had in the gut, the amount of different gut bugs he had in there, and I can't remember the numbers, but just say it was something like he had 6,000 variety at the beginning, and then he ate crap, heaps of sugar, heaps of, sat, uh, wasn't saturated fat, it was bad fat, trans fats, that sort of thing, and, uh, and anyway, so he ate, like I think it was a three week process, and he halved the number of different microbiome bugs, and then he swapped back to a Mediterranean diet and added in exercise and uh, it was yoga or meditation or something like that and it took about the same three week time to get his microbiome back so it doesn't take that long if you've got the home and the environment and everything and obviously for him that was like a six week process when we've been doing it for years and years and years we can do a lot more damage obviously doesn't mean we can't get you there but anyway so let's check. Okay, so your thymus gland isn't talking to your immune system. Oh. So we just need to connect those little guys up. It's the thymus gland in the thigh. Haha, -ha, no. No? No. <laughs> that would be T H Y in the US. It's in behind here. It's the reason, you know, the king monkey? <laughs> yeah. It's the reason the king monkey whacks himself in the morning. Because that boosts his immunity and makes him feel king of the jungle. He actually does, yeah, he actually it does boost the, um, and it boosts the heart chakra for those into chakras and stuff. But you know, because it activates it, you know, and like the tonsils and like the appendix, 
medically, you know, go, oh, you don't need your thymus gland after you're 13 years old or whatever. But they're finding these days that thymus gland, gee, what a surprise, it actually does work our whole yeah. lives. Well, you don't need muscles and good, strong bones. <laughs> you don't need these things, though. I mean, you don't need the work. No, that's right. You can get away with a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's true. You don't actually need to drink water. You don't actually need to... Uh, no, you don't need to do anything. I had a real estate agent years and years who came to see me and he never drank water ever. And uh, he would have about 13 glasses of water per day. No, of Coca-Cola per day. Yeah. And he would have Coke on his cornflakes in the morning. Because someone told him he had to do breakfast. No. And I'm like, what? How do you even do that? And why would you do that? Anyway. I like Coca-Cola. Yeah, people are weird. Yeah. Well, an addiction is an addiction, yeah. potentially. Yeah. I, I want a lifetime supply. <laughs> Make the most of it. Is that like Homer? I'll just try and sound I, like generic man. Yeah. So, in the, um, so I've just gone in, there's a list of things that are linked in with anxiety. And one of the things showing, and that actually showed up for you, and one of the things is to do with malabsorption, poor nutrition, and B12 deficiency. So I'll just circle that. Because obviously they're things that we're going to be working on, but it just lets me know today that it's shown up and, you know, the... No, it doesn't want anything. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Strep infections is showing up, but I'll leave that for bacteria because that's coming up next. And here we go. So, bacteria and bacterial particles. <laughs> and hold. Hold. And once again, bacteria, everyone has bacteria. This is a normal, normal thing. It's when it gets out of whack that it muscle tests up as being a problem. Oh, yeah, I can imagine the skeptics. Oh, my God. Sorry, I was just thinking, I, I had this hippie <laughs> chick in a few years ago, mm -hmm. and she had this idea that if she fasted long enough, she would get rid of all her parasites and all of her bacteria, and... And the more I sort of started to understand, she actually had like a bit of a psychosis about it. Like it was like this mental misunderstanding of what's actually going on in her body. So I think she'd been fasting for about 20 days when I saw her. And we're just doing some immune system stuff. And I said, well, how long are you going to keep fasting? And she said, oh, I don't know. I'm, not, I'm trying not to put a time on. She was skinny as a rake. Skinny, skinny, skinny. And... Um, and I said, well, what's your aim? And she said, I want to get rid of everything in my intestines. And I said, well, it's been 20 days. You know, what's your aim? And then we're going through the immune system stuff. And she said, well, if I just don't ever eat again, then surely there won't be any bacteria in my intestines. And I said, you know, you're only 1% human. So we've got 23,000 genes our bugs in our intestines have got well over a million genes. We will die without our bugs. Anyway, that made yeah. her want to ah! She did. She, she, she actually dry reached on the table. It was very funny. Well, it's a bad way of maybe saying it. You know, we'll die without our bugs. Oh, we will. Yeah, yeah. It's... This is the problem with the germ theory. People are paranoid about bugs and we are not all human. We have thousands of varieties in bugs well, inside. If this is the truth, then anyone who doesn't think well, about what it... What constitutes a, a functioning human happens to be that, you know, you have all of this, like, gut bacteria, Yeah, right? yeah, like, absolutely. We're like 90% gut bacteria, aren't we? You are what you eat over time. <laughs> anyway, it was a very interesting theory. Oh, goodness. Anyway, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to work. Yeah, remember to eat. So. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. 
Okay, I've got a weird bug that I've never heard of before showing up. Yes, it's on my list, but it's never muscle tested up before. Hold. Hold. Okay, so it's not showing up as uh, messing with the pattern. Oh. Uh, ah, it's energy mismatch. Okay. So it's called um, narcoidiosis. Dobbing on too many people. <laughs> Narc. Yeah. Narcing on them. So an energy mismatch to that, so the body just not recognising it. So might not be a bad thing. We just need to get the body to recognise it. So I've now got a big list of bacteria. Sometimes the body doesn't want anything more on the first um, session to just to recognize things. Anyway, we'll see. Okay. Um, this one, the next one showing up is genetically modified bacteria. Hold, hold, especially in our food supply, there's heaps of this sort of thing. They can be in our vaccines accidentally. About 6% of our vaccines potentially have got, um, you know, bacteria that is just accidentally in there. But genetically modified, potentially it's probably more from uh, non-organic food or genetically modified food. Probably more likely. <laughs> How often do you have GMO food? How often do you have GMO food versus the vaccine? Yeah. Well, it was in India years ago. Oh, probably less. Oh, no, no, no. They started doing heaps of Monsanto genetically modified stuff about 15 years ago in India. Mm. Didn't they destroy whole industries? Oh, it's messed them up big time. Mm. Good stuff. Yeah, because you can't, you know, from your crops, you can't use the seeds ever again. You have to keep on buying new seeds. Yeah, yeah. And then some people, they had their own crops but you know they found one seed and mm -hmm. drifted over and all and that's when Monsanto sues them yeah I'll take your tie stock yeah Hold. okay so this Ooh. one showing up as a Legionella um, pneumophilia don't stress about it you know once again there's millions of gut bugs or thousands of them and when the environment's bad stuff grows and when it's a problem is when on subsequent um, visits it just doesn't change so showing up the first time it's just all about recognition getting your immune system picking up and recognizing things that have just been in there you know having a play Okay, so there's also MRSA showing up, uh, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Basically, it's a staph infection. Um, but one of the things about staph and strep uh, is that they can be quite systemic. You know, it's sort of like 
and this is just a, you know generally as a rule of thumb from you know in here sinus that sort of thing is more likely to be staph doesn't have to be acne from teenage years often has a staph component anything throat wise is often um, strep but then the rest of the body they can be anywhere but there's that whole thing with staph and strep infections where uh, there's something on the cell membrane called an efflux pump and antibiotics come in through the efflux pump to kill the staph and strep but those two bugs particularly have been researched and they found that because we've been using the same antibiotics for 60, 70 years now, those bugs just recognise staph and strep. No, they just, re sorry, staph and strep recognise the antibiotics. So the antibiotics comes into the belly of the bug and the bugs just go, oh, here's some antibiotics and just shunt them back out through another reflux pump. Freaky deaky. Okay, and SIBO just showed up, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. I was just about to say that, you know, it could even just be a couple of random infections like Staph and Legionella that are in there causing um, the gut issues. The SIBO obviously shows up sometimes separately. Okay, so there's a couple of little viruses showing up. Once again, don't stress out about this because they're just names on a piece of paper that we're getting your body to recognise. So, and lots of things cause lots of things if they're in there long term. But what showed up... Oh, yeah. Um, are oncoviruses. So oncoviruses given the right uh, environment, long-term, can cause tumours. But they can also cause fatigue. They can also cause common cold and flu. You know, so they don't necessarily have to cause cancer. And when I start a treatment, I don't think I said this at the beginning, Paul, but basically I'm asking the body, minus all your supplements, minus any medication. So I always start that. So basically we're asking without any changes to your body uh, physiology. You know, so we're asking for the worst case scenario without all your supplements. So without any supplements, yes, there are viruses in there that potentially could cause harm down the track. Now, some of these are the sort of things like the SB40, XMRV, which we won't get to today, but they're basically the type of little viruses that can be in, say, vaccines when you go to India and that sort of thing, because there are known viruses in vaccines that are oncogenic. So if we get, we're not going to get there today. But this is a start. This is saying, okay, body, let's start looking at those viruses. Let's start recognising them. What is it? Uh, activating the lymph nodes. You're activating the immune system, so there's all sorts of immune system cells in order to recognise them, because if the body doesn't recognise them, it doesn't do anything with them. Now, 
And some things are so clever in the body. Candida glabrata is showing up. It's just one of the strains of candida. So for example, cancer cells, some cancer cells, not all cancer cells, but some cancer cells can release HCG, which is a pregnancy hormone. So if you're releasing HCG, does your immune system want to go kill that thinking it's a baby? That's how some, some of these cancers grow so that you know there's no signs until they're a certain size. Anyway, so this candida strain is candida glabrata. And I think the absolute standard one done at the doctors is albicans, candida albicans. Uh, so this one is just, and tropicalis is really common in hot environments. It's pretty funny, Albicans hardly ever shows up for me. Maybe that's because by the time I see people, they've already been working on their candida and maybe it's the easiest one to get rid of. I don't know. whole bunch of random things on these pages are not showing up, which is a good thing. There's a, there's, I'm going to check for muscle cell activation syndrome. Hold, 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 no, let me ask around histamines. Hold, okay, hold, right, hold. So histamines are a healing agent that are drawn to the brain, the spine, uterus, and the gut. So when any of those are struggling, often histamine is one of the healing agents that's sent there to help them to heal. Then our stomach, small intestines release diamine oxidase, which helps to take histamines out of the body from those areas. As a man, uh, histamine actually attracts EMFs as well, and EMFs are attracted to the testes. So, Yay, histamines get the uteruses, EMFs get the testicles. So basically, when histamine builds up in the body, it's hard for the body to um, Well, histamine is an amino acid, so unbound, it's in there creating like a low level inflammation. And one that once again, that's something that can be getting the body then to release biofilm in mucoid plaque and be causing some localised inflammation. Anyway, so histamine's showing up. and particularly the H3 receptors. Hold, 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 hold. No, seems like he's half asleep, but he was actually trying. <laughs> he is half asleep, but he was still trying. <laughs> yeah, well, I have to have a 
<laughs> yeah, there was just no energy there. So there's four different types of histamine receptors and the H3 receptors are the ones that are chocolate block in your little nervous system. So you need to wake them up. Wakey, wakey, rise and shine. Okay, so I might stop there and I'll just very quickly check supplements because we've only got a couple of minutes and uh, I'm actually heading out tonight. So, let me just have a squeeze. Yeah, okay. So once again, I think hopefully you'll be able to get metagenics in Japan. So one of the things that's just shown up is adrenotone. So adrenotone is a combination of Korean ginseng, Siberian ginseng, withania, rhodiola, and tyrosine. So it's basically an adrenal and thyroid combination. It's showing up about four a day. But it's one of those ones, that we were, when we were chatting on the phone yesterday, it's one of those things that you can sort of go, okay, I've got a huge 12 hour day today, I'll just take t three in the morning and get on my way. Because when you're running on adrenaline all day long, eventually you're gonna crash, stress wise. Yeah, okay. Okay, um, so EPA, DHA, more the EPA than the DHA. So in fish oils, EPA and DHA, EPA is anti-inflammatory and EPA also helps with uh, well, lots of stuff, you know, joints and skin healing and uh, at a big enough dose that EPA tends to be improve your serotonin, but you need about 2000 milligrams a day. So in the metagenics range, there's a MetaPure. Uh, it's taken all of the horrible stuff out because a lot of fish oils have heaps of dioxins and other toxins in them because that's what's in the, in the ocean. So there's a few brands of fish oils that you've got to just get ones that are fully cleansed. And the metagenics ones are probably the best ones in Australia. And uh, Nordic Naturals is another one. If you can get them, they're really pure. Orthoplex are really good, um, Bioceuticals aren't bad, you know, so there's a few brands that if you can get them, but basically the EPA, let me ask. Yeah, right. So particularly on days when your um, scalp is itchy, you need about two and a half thousand milligrams of EPA. If your skin's in a good way, you could just do uh, a thousand milligrams. So yeah, so the MetaPure, EPA, DHA and Metagenics, they've got 500 milligrams of EPA. You can also get liquids as well that have like um, two grams per five mils, I think, something like that. So you can do five mils, you know, if you prefer not to take a million tablets a day. But those essential fatty acids are also really good for your gut lining. Uh, they're also really, bizarrely enough, good fats help to pull bad fats out of your body. Obviously, because you can't put on weight, there could be something going on with your fat metabolism. Uh, so anyway, but... No, that's all good. But I suspect it's probably more you're running on a fast metabolism. Yeah, 
There was actually a Japanese study where they looked at the percentage in the cell membranes of EPA in the cell walls. And it was found that when people have got about 8% of the cell walls being EPA, they just have pretty much no symptoms as they get older. And that's sort of the level we need in order to live to over 100. It's really hard to get vegan EPA. So most vegans have only got about 2% EPA on the cell walls. I'm sure there's other good oils as well, but you know, the study was on EPA and longevity. Yeah, I'm surprised your liver doesn't want a bar of anything at the moment, interesting. Yeah, so both of those Bactrex and Parex are showing up and the Ultra Probioplex. <laughs> yeah, right. And going through the probiotics that I've got, just about all of them are saying, yes, 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 yes. So you've got some really good ones. So, you know, just keep that up. But yeah, the glutagenics from uh, Metagenics is really good because it helps to heal the gut lining. It's anti-inflammatory for the gut lining. Uh, it helps to heal ulcerations and things like that. It, uh, it's just a really nice soothing. So because don't forget that as we're killing off the bacteria and parasites and fungus and candida, we're going to be creating damage. So you can't kill these things without creating inflammation. So when you're having your Bactrex and Parex, Bactrex or Parex, uh, basically you need the Ultra Probioplex at the same time as taking them so that you are sopping up the LPSs, the lipopolysaccharides, so you'll be destroying your bacteria, you'll be sopping them up. And then simultaneous, and then, you know, so that's that week before and after the full moon. And then for the other two weeks, really get in the glutagenics for the healing and the probiotics. If you do the probiotics, which you can when you're doing Bactrex and Parex, you've just got to do it at a different time of day. So if you're doing, say, Parex or Bactrex morning and night, then do, say, your probiotics middle of the day. If you're not, you know, they've got to be a few hours away, otherwise they'll just kill them, you know. So, but it's very much about kill them off, create some space, boost the good guys. Okay, so your body's being really specific. So funnily enough, with the um, detoxing, I thought your DNA might have been wrecked and needed some sulfurophane or brock shots or something. Does not want a bar of that at the moment. So, but with the, uh, with the EPA, one of the other things EPA can do in big enough doses is help to heal your DNA. So, you know, with the DNA strands, there's these little things on the end called um, telomeres. So the longer the telomeres, in theory, the healthier we are and the better longevity we have, when we're stressed or toxic or too much sugar, too much alcohol, too much drugs, our telomeres shrink, we lose our genetic protection. So EPA, purified EPA in good doses helps to lengthen those telomeres and that's a really good dose. Okay, so that's what I've got time for today. We're on Messenger now, so shoot me a message anytime. If I forget, get back to me. I just annoy me till I respond. Don't feel bad about that. I feel bad if I miss things, so, you know, always pull me up because I just get lots of messages these days, so I try to get back. Okay, so this is a new program for this body, now in the future. The old program for this body is no longer necessary, now in the future. Okay, thank you very much. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks, Blazy.